always like getting a little bit extra of whatever I need just in case I make a horrible mistake and have to redo it, which has happened before and I didn't buy enough so that I'd have to go back and buy more. Hi there, Michelle here and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be crocheting a hamburger. Last year, roughly around this exact same time, my friend Heather had requested for me to make her a giant hot dog. Now I didn't do a video on making this because at that time I was making more tutorial videos and I really just didn't want to film the process because I wanted to get it done because <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing with it. Now I don't really do tutorial videos anymore. I just do like crochet vlog videos, just more for inspiration for y'all. So if you see something you're like, oh, that's cool. I'm going to try to attempt to make it. That's kind of why I do these videos. Also, they're fun. It's more funner for me to make a vlog video of me crocheting than to make a tutorial because making tutorials are very stressful and they take a lot of time to do. Anywho, literally this morning my friend Heather had texted me asking me to make her a hamburger and I'm like, hmm, maybe. And then I'm like, you know what, I can make a video of it, so let's do it. I looked on Pinterest and I kind of got some ideas and I think I'm going to make it like the same way that I made the hot dog, like the same colors and everything like that, but also I'm going to make it detachable. So instead of just making one solid hamburger. Also, I feel like the hamburger might be like this big. It's, it's not gonna be a little hamburger, but it's not gonna be like humongous. But anyways, I digress. I wanna make it so that way it all can like come apart. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to make each piece separately, which I was gonna make them anyways, but I was gonna stitch them all together. I'm like, wait a minute, if I add Velcro in the middle of each piece, you can like take them off, restack them, move them around. I think that's a really fun idea. The colors that I'm gonna use, I'm gonna try my best to just use yarn that I already have and don't have to go buy anymore. I know I am gonna have to buy at least one color because I don't have that color. I went to my yarn stash in the garage and I picked some yarn out. As I was carrying this back in the house, I felt like I was like gardening and I was bringing back, you know, the fruits of my labor, but it's just yarn. This was literally the only basket I could find in the garage to uh, put the yarn in. This color here, which I don't know what it is because nowadays what I do is I actually roll the label inside of the yarn, but back then I wasn't doing it. And I'm pretty sure this was actually used for the hot dog, the hot dog bun. So I think that this was the outer layer of the hot dog bun. So this is going to be the outer layer of the hamburger bun. This, I don't think I actually used for it, but I brought it in just in case. I think there's another color, which I don't have. I might use this for like the inside of the bun. I might use a different color. I have this yarn here, which is going to be a tomato. These are all craft smart yarn. I really like it because they are just a little bit more thicker and I like using them for like plushies. I don't make a lot of plushies, but usable items like the cushion I made, the hot dog, stuff like that. And I have this, which I'm actually going to use for the cheese. I really like this color because it's not too vibrant. I have so much of this color yarn. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. And then I also have this one here, which I'm going to be using for the hamburger patty itself. This was actually the same brown that I used for my zigzag pillow. And then I am going to be making a piece of lettuce. I love green, but I don't buy a lot of green yarn. And the green yarn that I do buy isn't the color that I need for this project. I need like a very vibrant in your face green. And if you watched my last, if you watched one of my vlogs, I did see it. So I got to go get green yarn. What sucks is that I was at Michael's today buying yellow yarn for another project. <laughs> oh, I have so many projects going on. Why am I doing this to myself? And I should have picked up that green. Oh, well, I'll go tomorrow. I'll go the next day. I'll go one of the days to go get some more yarn. And then I think I think I might be making an onion piece, but I think for the onion, I want to make it two tones. Like, I think I want to make it like a red onion where it's like purple and then it has a stripe of like white, purple, what, you know, you know, here's a slice of a purple onion or red onion, whatever the onion's called. This is the onion that I'm going to make because I want a few layers. I don't want it to be too boring. Pretty much sums up the plan for this project. I'm hoping to maybe start it this week. This I don't think is going to take me as long as I think. The hot dog took me a while because it didn't make any sense at first how I was making it because there wasn't any clear tutorials. But this hamburger one looks pretty simple. I say this now, who knows what trouble future Michelle will get into. But for right now, I think it's a pretty straightforward project. I just need to buy the rest of the colors for this the polyfill, and I think I'm good to start it. Okay, where am I today? I'm literally filming three videos at once. You can see this outfit in multiple videos. You know why, because I'm just getting things done. So I went to Michael's and I got the polyfill for the, or it says fiber fill on this, to use for the hamburger bun. So I'm going to be putting this in the hamburger bun, the top and the bottom, and also the meat patty. I didn't need all of this for future projects. I could use it. It did come out to be, I 
think nine dollars or something like that i had 30 percent off so i know i could buy a pillow but i'd rather just buy this so we have that and then i did go to fabric land which i didn't film because i was in and out in like two seconds but i did buy these if they had colorful ones, I would have bought the colorful ones. And I know, I believe Michaels does sell colorful Velcro, but they didn't have the size I wanted because I want this really thick, thick Velcro. I'm going to cut them into squares. I think a little bit smaller than this. The smaller version of this was too small, if that makes any sense. So I got this for the darker colors and I bought this one for the lighter colors. Always like getting a little bit extra of whatever I need just in case I make a horrible mistake and have to redo it, which has happened before and I didn't buy enough so that I'd have to go back and buy more. And then that way, if I don't use it all, I have it for future projects. For some reason, I completely forgot to show you guys the color yarn that I said that I needed to buy. This is the yarn that I picked out for the lettuce. It is the Loops and Thread Soft Classic Acrylic. It's green is called Lime Aid. And then for the onion, I got this Craft Smart yarn and it is actually called Raspberry. It's such a pretty color that I'm kind of disappointed that I don't get to use a lot of it, but you know, future projects. I have this fun yarn to use now. And then also for the onion, I just have this white, which is also a Craft Smart white. So this is the white I'm gonna use. All right, so, so far I got the tomato done and honestly, all it was, was just 10 rows and just increasing until I got to the 10 rows. Then I ended up doing the onion and I kind of wanted to make it like a purple onion. So I did two rows of white, then one row of this kind of purpley color, then two, one, two. And then I ended up with just doing two rows of purple at the end. So that way there's 10 rows. For the lettuce, I ended up doing five rows, just single crochets, increasing. And then when I got to the sixth row, what I did, I did half double. So I would do one half double in one stitch. Then in the next stitch, I would do two half doubles, then one, then two, then one, just, you know, until I go all the way around. And then on the seventh row, I did half doubles, but I did two half doubles in every single stitch. So then that way you get this wavy lettuce going on. And it is the same size pretty much as the onion and tomato. Now I'm gonna be working on the cheese. So I'm gonna be using this yellow. And for the cheese, I'm actually going to be making it a square. What I've learned, you know, after many years of crocheting, I'm still learning a bunch of stuff. If you're making like a square or something flat, use a hook that's one size bigger than your actual hook. So I'm actually using a five hook, but because of the starting chain, I'm gonna be using a six hook. And then after I'm done the first starting chain, I switch back to my regular hook size. For anyone who watched my last vlog, uh, I hung the painting up. The painting is here now and uh, I think it looks good. Let's get into what I'm going to do today. I would like to get most of it done today. Let's see, what do I have? What do I have? The onion is done, tomato, cheese. I also have the lettuce. I have the hamburger patty somewhat done. There's a hole in it right now because I need to fill it. I believe this is the bottom of the bun. And then I have the top of the bun. These parts that also go with the bun. So I did them separate. So then that way they can go like that. But because I have to put Velcro on it, I didn't want to sew them together because that would be just a chaotic mess to put Velcro in. So I want to attach the Velcro to it first, which I'm hoping I can just do on my sewing machine and not have to hand sew. If I have to hand sew, I have to hand sew. But if I can get it on my sewing machine, I would love that so much more. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the Velcro. I'm going to cut square and I'm going to sew them onto each piece. So, you know, you'll have like the, the pointy side and then the soft side on each side. And then after they're sewn on, I'm going to block them, a wet block them, right? So I'm just going to put them down. And I know it's acrylic, so sometimes wet blocking doesn't really work, but you know, just to maybe get these rolled edges, not so rolled. And then I'll leave them stretched out overnight. I don't think I'm going to do it for the bun though, because the bun is pretty round and I'm going to have to attach them together. So I'm probably going to Velcro the, the inner layer of the bun. I guess this is the outer layer. This is the inner layer. Mm. And then I'm going to sew it together and add the filling. And that is why I actually left really long piece of string. So then that way I can just use the same thread for this, like attach it to here. That is the plan. Hopefully everything goes okay. I've, I don't think I've ever sewn something on my sewing machine that was crocheted. Might be a mistake. I might've done something at one point, but I don't recall. So hopefully it goes okay today. We will, we will soon see how that goes. Okay, so I want them to be a good size. Do you think that's too big? That might be too big. 
I think that's a good size. I'm gonna go sew these on now. What I found of sewing these, it took me like a few pieces of the hamburger to finally figure out the best way to do it. What I would do is I would put the one part of the Velcro on first. I would just give it a simple stitch along all the four edges. And then when I would flip it over to put the other side, I would make sure that I line them up and I would do a zigzag stitch. So then that way the zigzag stitch goes through both pieces of the Velcro and then I would sew just a simple X right in the middle just to make sure the Velcro wasn't going anywhere. And now it was time to try to like make these just a little bit more rounded. They kind of have like a hexagon shape right now. It's fine, like it doesn't look too bad, but I just wanted to see if I could make them a little bit more rounder. So I just used some pins and this little foam mat that I use for my crochet blocking. And I just laid these flat, pinned them out, and then I just gave them a good little spray of water. I was such on a roll. I had attached the bottom, I stuffed it, and then I realized that I didn't put the little sesame seeds on the top. Mm -hmm. So before I close this up, I'm gonna quickly put the sesame seeds on the top and just kind of sew them on and then I can close it up. So good thing I caught that when I did. So I've actually let these sit for two days. I didn't have time to work on it yesterday, like film the outro. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna leave it for a few days. So now let's take these pins out and see if they've changed shape a little bit. These, I definitely see a little bit of a change, a little bit. This one still has kind of like the curly ends, so I think I might give this like a little steam. But you know, it's the best that I can do. They're circles, they're fine, they're fine. All right, so I just want to quickly talk about the hamburger bun. To get it so that way it's kind of rounded like this, what I did is I did do the 10. So like, you know, you do your increases until you have 10 rows. And then whatever the number of stitches were on the 10th row, I just continued to do do the same amount. So I wasn't adding, I wasn't decreasing. I was just kept going around and around and around. Kind of get this side of it here. And then for this, again, I did the, the increases, but because this was a different yarn, I actually had to do 13 rows. But if I was using the same yarn as this, I would have just done the 10 rows. And then for this, bottom part I actually did the same as the hamburger I did the 10 and then when I ended up at the 10 I did two more rows of the same amount that I got to 10 so no increasing no decreasing around and then I did that same for the bun except for the bun when I did the two rows I stopped and then I attached this part and to attach it all I did was get a yarn needle and I attached it inside out which I didn't film I don't know why I didn't I was just having camera issues camera issues being I was just a little lazy but anyhow did it inside out out until I got to like this section here and then I folded it how it looks now Then I stuffed it and I finished sewing it up so that's how I did the bun pretty easy you know I wanted it to be stackable pop everything on it and there you have it and the hamburger is done I think it actually turned out pretty cute it is a little Whoa. But that's just because the Velcro is like right in the middle of each piece. And you know, with time, I feel it will get squished down a little bit more. But for right now, I mean like, oh, it all stays together. So I guess that's good. I'm looking at this and I'm like, I really want a hamburger right now. It actually looks a lot better than I thought. At one point I'm like, what am I making anymore? Cause last year when I was making the hot dog, I was like almost done and I'm like, does this even look like a hot dog anymore? Like I forgot what a hot dog looked like. Like I know I could look up a photo, but like in my head, I'm like, is this even a hot dog anymore? Do I look like I know what a JPEG is? I just want a picture of a god dang hot dog. That was kind of happening with this hamburger. I'm like, is this a hamburger? It is a hamburger. 
And then what I did to make sure that everything has the same, like everything can like be stackable. So say like the onion, the bottom of each one has the softer side of the Velcro. And then the top of each one has the, you know, the spiky part of the Velcro. That way like they can be moved around. I didn't want to end up having one where the soft side and soft side, because then that would just throw off how to place everything. So everything does have a certain way it has to sit, but in, in the order, it can go whatever way it can go because they're all detachable, right? And so like you can move things around. Like maybe I want the lettuce and then I want cheese and then we'll put the hamburger. Let's put that tomato, onion, top of the bun. There we go. That could have been put together a little bit better, but you get the idea. And everything has the little square in the middle. I think it would have looked a lot better if I could get the exact color of Velcro, but again, they didn't have it for the size that I wanted it in. I'm basically just building the hamburger how I would eat the hamburger if I were to have one. I think it's a pretty good size. I probably could went a little bit bigger but I wasn't too sure how big was too big but I'm glad I didn't go any smaller because then it would have been like this tall thin hamburger okay so now let's discuss pros and cons and what things maybe I should change oh my original plan was I was going to steam the cheese that sounds something like something but mm. I like how it curls because when you put cheese on like a hot hamburger it melts so it does get these like little droopy droopiness of it so I'm like we're just gonna leave it because I think it just adds a little bit more character to the hamburger so for the bun the yarn I don't know it just was giving this like pale pink color on its own but then when I started to crochet with it it turned into this really nice like toasty bun color which I shouldn't be surprised because I used the exact same one for the hot dog but when I was doing it the other day I'm like is this the right color I did switch up the middle color so instead of that beigey brown color that I showed at the beginning I just didn't like how it looked with this color so I actually went with an impeccable color for right here I also think I might have stuffed the bun just a little too much it's a little bit like rounded here I probably shouldn't have put as much stuffing in you know with time like stuffed animals and plushies and whatnot the stuffing inside starts to condense and then it gets a little bit smaller so with time this hamburger will get a little bit smaller it's so hard to like balance this thing it's a good thing they're all velcroed together I think this turned out pretty good I give it like a 9 out of 10 because there are a few things that if per chance I had to make another one in the future, I would make those changes. But for my first attempt at making a hamburger, it's pretty simple. And if you want to make one at home, honestly, it's just a bunch of circles. So as long as you know how to increase with crocheting, this is going to be pretty easy. There's... There's the hamburger. If you're new to my channel, like sewing, thrifting, crafting, and of course crocheting, why not hit the subscribe button? You can follow me on my Instagram and my TikTok. I think that's it. See so y'all have a good day now.